We're going to do an example of finding local extreme values. The instructions on the homework say find critical values, but you should be doing that anyway. Before you find a maximum or a minimum, which is what a local extreme value is, you first need to make sure that your function is continuous or at least at the places that you're looking at. Now I'm given a polynomial and polynomials are continuous and differentiable everywhere. So I'm going to write that first. F is a polynomial. So F is continuous and differentiable everywhere. So it's just going to save me some time writing the differentiable part once I get to my critical values. So you should know by now a function can only have a, or at least a continuous function can only have a local maximum or minimum at a critical value. That's where my first derivative is equal to zero or undefined. My first derivative should be pretty easy. That's just some power rule stuff. We're gonna say we're gonna let f prime equals zero, looking for the critical values. And then some factoring. And hopefully you can see x is 0 and x is equal to 4 are our two critical values. Because I said f was differentiable everywhere, I don't need to say f prime is undefined at no points. I'm good to go. So what do I do now? Well, I'm going to look for a change in sign of the first derivative of f. So I'm going to make what's called a sign chart. I'm going to put on my critical values, 0, 4, because the only time my first derivative can change signs is where the first derivative is equal to zero and undefined, or undefined. That's zero and four. I put arrows on the end of my sign chart because the domain I'm working with is all real numbers. I'm gonna tell everyone these are x's and this chart gives me the sign of f prime. So I just need to test intervals. So some number less than zero goes into f prime. I'm gonna use negative a million because three times a million squared is way more positive than negative 12 times a million. So that means from negative infinity to zero, f prime is positive. If I choose a number in between zero and four like one, that would be three minus 12 is definitely negative. And a number greater than four, we can just use the end behavior of f prime like a million squared times three minus 12 times a million gives me a positive number. So that means F prime is going to increase from negative infinity up to zero, decrease from zero to four, and increase from four to infinity. Did I say F prime? Okay. F prime is negative, or I'm sorry, positive from negative infinity to zero, which means F is increasing from negative infinity to zero. F prime is negative from zero to four, which means F is decreasing from zero to four. I wasn't asked about that. I was asked about local extreme values, and hopefully you can see F has a local maximum at zero. F has a local minimum at four. We need to write our answers. So we're gonna start off with F is continuous. I know we already wrote that, but it's super important. So I'm gonna reiterate again. And then I'm gonna say F prime. How do we know we found a minimum? F prime changed from positive to negative. Where? And we have to say where, where did f prime change from positive to negative at x equals zero. So f has a local maximum. Some people think they can stop here, they can't. Right now my sentence says f ch prime changes from positive to negative at this specific place. So f has a local maximum somewhere. No, 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 f has a local maximum also at x equals zero. Let's see what happens at x equals 4, at x equals 4, f prime changes from negative to positive. So move it up, f has a local minimum. at x equals 4. 
I do want to point out a lot of people make the mistake of confusing the words negative and decreasing and the words positive and increasing. Please watch out for that. I have used these words correctly. If you're not sure, let me know.